Hello, my name is Carolyn McCarty. I am the guest curator of Geography Lessons. I am a retired professor emerita from the University of British Columbia, where I taught art history. I haven't retired from research. I'm still very involved with that. In my career, I taught a lot of contemporary and modern courses. I taught a contemporary Canadian and modern and contemporary global and a course on outsider art. Uh, and, that, and I've also written a lot of essays on artists in the Okanagan, including a lot of women artists in the Okanagan. I always wondered about what happened here prior to the time we got the Fine Arts Department at Okanagan College and prior to us getting uh, the Kelowna Art Gallery in 1976 because there were paintings around, there were obviously artists. And one of the artists who was almost legendary in Kelowna was an artist who went by the name Miss Duke. And every time we would drive by her house down on Walker and El Dorado, my husband would say, ah, that's Miss Duke's house, and I'd look at Miss Duke's house. Um, but I didn't really have the opportunity to go much further than that at that point. Well, this exhibition has had a rather long germination period. Uh, it started when a box of Nellie Duke works were brought up from the basement of the Cathedral Church of St. Michael and All Angels in 2019. And the people at the church just wanted to see what they had. They, I think, wisely contacted an art historian who was interested in women artists to come in and look at them. And very quickly, um, a sort of impromptu exhibition was put up. We invited people to put up your dukes, and people did. And at the same time, the Kelowna Art Gallery mounted an exhibition called Through Her Eyes uh, and included Nellie Duke and Grace Willis and Sophie Atkinson among artists, other artists in this group exhibition. And I was invited to do a talk, anything I wanted for this exhibition. And I thought, well, I don't think anybody's going to talk about these mid-century watercolorists, and I've always been interested in them, so why don't I do a talk? Well, there's not much written about them, and so it was a lot of research to do it. Um, but I, I learned a lot, and I found a way of putting them in context. And then Natalie Nash, the director of the Kelowna Art Gallery, asked me if I would be interested in doing an exhibition of Nellie Duke and really whatever I wanted to do with Nellie Duke. And I thought it would be a good idea to pair her with another artist. And the artist I decided to pair her with was Sophie Atkinson because there were many similarities between the two artists. Um, they both came here having had lives in Britain uh, in 1926 when they were both in the southern central interior. Nellie Duke was 36 years old and Sophie Atkinson was 50 years old. They came by themselves. They didn't have family with them. They weren't moving here because there was family here. They had both been trained in the British watercolor tradition and had a certain way of painting. And they were both real community activists. Uh, so it seemed like a very good pairing to put these two artists together. The exhibition is called Geography Lessons. Um, because both of these artists were trained in the topographical tradition, which means looking at the formation of landscape and paying attention to geology, taking, paying attention to what feeds into what. Um, and this is very necessary. British military people were traditionally trained in topography, and they both came out of that type of background. Um, Nellie Duke's father worked for the Indian Medical Service, and Sophie Atkinson's father taught torpedo shooting to the Egyptian army. So they both had a degree of military knowledge. 
And it intrigued me that both artists came to the South Central Okanagan because our geography is very, very complicated. We've, uh, and I think people, it takes people a long time to sort out what's really happening. We've got a lot of cities and towns strung out along the main line of the CPR, and they all lead into valleys which are very, very different. So whether you come down from Kamloops into the Monty Lake sort of area, whether you go south from Revelstoke, you're in, you're in very different areas. And I feel that when you put the works of these two artists together, you see how geographically diverse and interesting uh, the southern central interior of BC is. And so, um, the, I can see too that each artist really sought the geographical peculiarities of the area. Nellie Duke looked at the petrified forest, which I can't tell you where it is because it's a deep dark secret. They don't want people going in there. Uh, she looked at the cliffs of Enderby and these are, are, are very significant geological features here. And you see Sophie Atkinson doing the same thing when she comes to the Okanagan. You see her doing the same thing in Revelstoke. Well, that is an interesting question because uh, no sooner had the exhibition started to gel as an idea um, between Natalie and myself, then the pandemic hit. And that made, it not only made research really difficult, because they're both British, they both came over here, um, well in their 30s, and Sophie in her 50s, and so galleries and archives were closed, and so it was very quickly obvious it would be impossible to bring works in from uh, Britain, for example, there are a few words from Britain, but that's leaning on friends rather than leaning on galleries. Um, and that it just, you couldn't you really ship works during the pandemic. Um, people were washing their apples, their fruit, their cereal boxes, but you really can't take a watercolor and give it a good scrub with soap and water. So we decided to focus, I decided to focus on works in local collections and really make it a very Okanagan and Revelstoke-based exhibition because Nellie Duke is really synonymous with Okanagan, with Kelowna and Okanagan Mission, but she spent a lot of time in Revelstoke, whereas Sophie Atkinson, who moved to Revelstoke in 1968 at the age of 72, is synonymous with Revelstoke, but spent a lot of time in the Okanagan. So there's a certain symmetry in their lives. Um, for what I did for the Kelowna portion, I basically phoned everybody I could think of in Okanagan Mission. And people started talking to other people, and people said, well, no, you really ought to talk to so-and-so. And, of course, people didn't want me over in their living rooms because of the pandemic, but they would send me images and sometimes I'd stand on doorsteps and peer into living rooms to see what people had. Um, in Revelstoke, Kathy English, who's the museum, uh, the curator of the museum and archives, she put me in touch with many people who had studied with Sophie Atkinson and who had works by her. And so the exhibition came together as a group of very well-loved works that are of the Okanagan and Revelstoke region. They have been owned by people who live with them. And when you live with art, it, it gets in your DNA. It, it's part of you, you know, it's just, and I'm sure they're missing their works really badly um, for the length of this exhibition. Um, there were obviously many, many more works I came across, and I'm still coming across new works by these artists. But it was um, to fit in the gallery space, to try to make a cohesive exhibition that, that really represented each artist fairly, that showed the scope of their work, um, that showed the, oh, there, there, there's some interesting things about their works. And so I think by keeping it local, it speaks to looking closely at the art history of the South Central Interior. 
Well, this could be a rather lengthy answer because I really thought about Victoria's uh, question for this one. And I came up with a lot of points. Um, and so one of the points is there are many ways of being an artist. Uh, that, that these works are done in the tradition of 19th century British watercolors. That is one way of being an artist. Um, that the lives of these women were very interesting. Uh, it's very unusual for women to come um, approaching middle age um, without any family support and having no family support here. There were no bishop brothers to help take care of. There were no elderly parents here to take care of. In fact, the elderly parents' disappearance of them fostered their ability to come. The, um, I hope that another takeaway, besides the complete interesting lives that these women led, is that there were challenges for the, these two artists. It's true, Canada is a vast country. Everyone says we're sort of strung out along the American border. And if you choose to live in relatively isolated communities, you don't have access to the latest currents in art development. Shipping costs are very, very expensive. It's difficult to get materials in. You might be the only artist in a community like Revelstoke requiring a certain type of watercolor paper. Um, and so you have to arrange to bring it in. And then just um, the whole thing about being able to meet with other artists. Artists need artists. They need to bounce ideas off and they need artists with different ideas saying, well, why are you doing that? And here's what I'm doing. And that type of dialogue that you get when finally you have an art club or an art school. The um, other thing that I hope that people take away, one other thing I hope that they take away is that there are many ways to position yourself as an artist. Yes, as an artist, you do whatever your métier is. You're a painter, you're a ceramicist, you're a watercolorist. But in both of these cases, these artists realized that they had to play a community role. And that community role was part of their responsibility as artists. And so Nellie Duke was interested in the form, in, uh, involved in the formation of the Kelowna District and Art Club in 1947. And she'd been involved in art clubs elsewhere earlier, particularly the foundation of the Federation for Canadian Artists. But Nellie Duke also advocated for establishing the Kelowna Art Gallery. She knew that we needed a Kelowna Art Gallery, that you couldn't show in car sales rooms, in the upper rooms of the Hotel El Dorado, um, in people's living rooms forever, that you had to have a gallery. And Sophie Atkinson in Revelstoke was very much the same. She formed the Revelstoke Art Club in 1962 and so she had a huge impact on teaching uh, young art students and also people who maybe in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s wanted to learn to paint. But she also said every art community needs to have an art center. If the arts are going to live, that's really, really important. So they were advocates and I hope that that comes out in this exhibition, what they did for their communities. And then my last point revolves around the fact that when we look at the works in the exhibition, and I hope people look at them very carefully and ask questions about them, because this is an exhibition taking place in 2023, but looking at the landscapes through the eyes of people who were doing the paintings from the 1930s to the 1970s, let's say. And things have really changed in the landscape. I don't think there is such a thing as just a pretty landscape. I think when you look at these works, you see you're challenged to think about what we've done with our stewardship of the land, whether we always are cognizant of the fact that the landscape the land is a living thing and it's our responsibility. So two examples, 
Uh, when you look at the early Sophie Atkinson works, uh, the work done in Oyama, at the Friends of her British Orchardists, um, you see how heavily irrigated that land is to provide for that beautiful English garden. And that's a really dry hillside that we're looking at. You, you pass that hillside now on the four-lane road up to Vernon. It is very heavily irrigated. That, that is a change to the land. If you look very closely at one of Nellie Duke's works of Mount Revelstoke, you'll see that there's actually a forest fire taking place very, very far up on the hill of the mountain. And uh, we're living in a time when we're really sensitive to that. We're, we're very worried about forest fires right now. We're very worried about drought and what causes drought and how we're going to irrigate crops. And so I hope that people will think, um, think about that, that they, there's just no such thing as a pretty picture. These pictures tell something about the land at the time the artists were there and ask us to think, well, what have we done about it since then? Thank you.